In this tutorial, we're going to explore the concept of using multiple sheets in a single session to create the multi-material welcome sign that you can see here. We'll start by drawing out all of the vectors for the sign layout, which we'll then look at how we can set up various size sheets to machine the different elements of this sign, all in one single file. So let's go to File, Close, so let's start by creating a new file. So here we're actually going to set up our job according to the overall design. So here we're just going to go to the single sided job. We're going to put in a width here of 24 inches and then the height is going to be 10 inches and then the material thickness that we could use is half an inch. We're going to set the Z zero position on the material surface and the XY datum position in the lower left hand corner. But again, please bear in mind that this setup is purely just for the design that we're creating. And we'll come to think about all of the uh, job sizes and the zero positions on a per sheet basis as we get to those. Okay, so for now, we're just looking at this as an overall uh, design layout. So we're just gonna go ahead and press okay. So we're going to start by creating our initial design for the overall sign and then once we've got the design laid out we can then think about what parts are going to be machined in different materials and go through that setup. So let's start by drawing a rectangle. So if we click in there that will open up the draw rectangle form. So here we're going to specify what type of rectangle we want to draw. So we're going to have a corner type that is square. We're going to go with a width here of 22 and a half and a height of eight inches. I would like that positioned in the center of my job so I can see X12, Y5. So let's just say X12 and Y5 over here. And then we could go ahead and press create. Okay, now I'd like to create another rectangle to create the kind of inner border for our sign. So whilst we're still in the draw rectangle tool, we could go ahead now and we could alter the width here. So we're going to make that one 21. We're going to make the height of this six and a half. We're also going to look at applying a radius um, corner here. So we're going to go with a internal corner to give us this effect whereby we're going to set the radius here to be 0 0.4. And then we can press create and we can see that's been applied there. So let's just close out. And now we can start to think about adding the welcome to our home text. So we're going to go and draw some text using the draw text tool. Okay, so here we can position our text box wherever we like. So we're going to have welcome. At the moment, I can see the text size or the height here. It's going to be pretty small. So we're just going to increase that uh, to around four and a half inches. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set our font. So we're going to use the brush script MT. Okay, so the fonts displayed at the top here are my recent fonts. Uh, so we're going to use the brush script there. And then we're just going to type in the word welcome, like so. And then we're just going to click in place over here. We're going to look at creating the to our home text. Okay, so uh, the height, we just need to decrease, let's say one inch there. And we're just going to alter the font. Let's do this Dubai medium. And we're going to do this one all in capitals, uh, whereby we can just enter that text in there. And then once you're happy, you can simply close out and then we can just really look at uh, a line in the text within our job. So here we're just going to align that to the center. So if we go to the center, we're going to align it to the material center there. In which case we're just going to take that and I'm just going to nudge that up like so. And then this one, we're just going to hold down shift like so and we just want to align that to the center of our uh, selection just in terms of the uh, horizontal position so here we can click like that and then we know that that's in the center uh, so we have even space to the right and we have even space to the left what I might want to do is look at just nudging that down ever so slightly and I think I'm happy with what we've got there. So we'll just go ahead and we'll close out. 
So now we're going to look at drawing the arrows that are going to go either side of the two hour home text. So let's just click into the white space and to start us off, we're going to use the draw rectangle tool. So here we're just going to click and drag a shape out. Okay, so something like that will do for now. And then we can close out here and then we could look at drawing in the arrowhead. So we're going to use the draw polyline tool in this case. Using the scroller of my mouse, I'm scrolling towards my monitor uh, to, in order for me to scroll into our job. And then here, I'm actually going to snap to the center of the end of our rectangle here. And then we're just going to click and then drag that up, whereby we're going to click again. And then we're just going to come down at kind of 35 degree angle. And then we can just simply click to accept that. And then we're going to right click to come out there. And we just want to create a copy of this uh, underneath here. So to help us, let's just quickly draw in a line. So we're drawing in a line that snaps to the end point of our arrow head. And then we can take that vector, shift and select the line that we've just drew. And then we're going to go into the mirror tool, whereby we're going to create a mirrored copy where we're going to flip that about the line that we've got selected. And so if we use the flip about line option, you can see that it's done that there for us. And then we can simply close out. We can take that line and we can look at deleting that. And then we can take the bottom part of the arrow and the top part of the arrow, in which case we can then go ahead and join those vectors by using the join vectors tool. If we hit join, we can close out and we can see we've got one vector there. So then what we can do is we can go into node edit mode. I'm just going to right click to delete that point there. But then I'm going to select both of these nodes here and then using the right arrow keys, I'm just going to nudge that along ever so slightly. I'm also going to look at actually decreasing the arrow here. I feel like it's a little bit too big. So with those selected, we're going to go ahead and press V on the keyboard and that's going to bring up a vertical line in the center of our selection, in which case then I can use my uh, arrow keys and you'll see that it will move those nodes um, both at the same time. Okay, so I'm just pressing the down arrow key. Okay, so I think I'm fairly happy with that. And then one final thing I'd like to do to edit this shape is just go onto the right click menu for this span here. We want to turn that into a bezier span. I'm going to take those handles and then I'm just going to nudge over to the left using my arrow keys to give us a nice curve that you can see here. And then we can simply click to accept that and then click, right click to come out of node edit mode. So then all we need to do is just weld these two vectors together. So with those two vectors selected, let's just go into the weld tool like so. And there we have the arrow on the left hand side. So now what we can do is we could look at uh, making sure that's center to the actual to our home text. So we're just going to click on the text here. We're going to go into the align selected objects tool. And we're just going to align that to the center of our text. Okay, so now I know that this is aligned um, to the center of the text, both vertically and horizontally, we can then look to position that back over into place like so, something like that. And once we're happy with that, we can then make the copy on the right hand side, whereby we can simply select that and then using the shortcut key, control, shift, followed by the letter H, that will create a copy for us horizontally like so. Okay, and there we have uh, the main part of our design. So just a couple of other things to do before we finish up with the design and that is we need to weld our welcome text so it's one entity. At the moment we can see those characters are overlapping each other. So if we take that we can come over to the weld selected vectors option. It's going to ask us if we want to replace these vectors or do we want to keep the original objects. So we're just going to replace in this instance. And then with all of those vectors selected, we're just going to press G on the keyboard to group them. So it's one uh, entity there. 
And then next up, we need to look at creating a nice textured background. So we're going to look at using the vector texture tool, whereby we're going to create a swirly background within the bounds of this vector here. So we're going to select this vector as our boundary. And we're going to go into the vector texture tool. So here we have various settings and um, options that we can use to really control the waves and the textures that we create. And for a more dedicated tutorial, then please go ahead and watch the vector texture guide tutorials, which I'll link you to in the related videos section for this tutorial. But here we're just going to go with a basic uh, wave setup here. So we're going to have a max spacing of 0.35. We're going to have an amplitude of 0.8 and we're going to have a wavelength of 3.75. So we're going to look at placing these vectors on a layer and we'll just call that layer texture. And then we could go ahead and preview that and we can see the result of uh, all of these settings and what we're seeing here in terms of the texture. And I really like this wavy pattern. So then we could simply go ahead there and press OK. So at the moment, our design does look quite busy. So we're going to go to our layers bar at the top here. And we're just going to alter the color of the texture layer. We can do that by clicking on this arrow here. And we're just going to set that to be a light gray. And there we can see uh, a little better how our part would look. So now that the design is ready, we can start to think about the materials that we want to cut the different parts out with. And we can organize our vectors onto different sheets. So to do that, we need to go over to our Sheets tab. And so looking at our design, the way that I'd like to machine this is I'd like to have the welcome cut out of a white acrylic that is then inlaid into this textured backing, which I'd like to machine that out of a cherry material. And then the two hour home along with those arrows, I'd like to machine that out of a black acrylic. And so we're just creating a lot of contrast here with the black and white acrylic against the nice cherry in the background. And then I'd like to have a border piece that would sit on top of the sign to create uh, depth and height. Um, and I'd like that to be machined out of just some ordinary MDF that we can then paint up to a color of our choosing. And so we'd have uh, a sheet that would represent the border, a sheet that would represent the two hour home text along with the arrows, a sheet that would represent the welcome text and then a sheet for the actual uh, textured background and the actual backing of our part. So we're going to start by renaming sheet one. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to right click and we can use the rename option here. In which case, I'd like to call this one sign layout. And so having this named sign layout, it just it just tells me that this is the overall uh, layout, the design for our part. And then when we come to add in different sheets, we're actually going to look at copying the various elements to the appropriate sheets so that um, we have the parts for machining, but we'll always have our safe layout saved within this sign layout sheet. So now we can start to think about adding in those sheets. So to add in a new sheet, come to the bottom over here and use the add new option. Okay, so we can give that a name. So here, let's start with the black acrylic. So we'll put in black acrylic in there. And then what we can do is we can look at altering the X, Y and Z values for that sheet by using the edit option. Okay, and that will open up the edit sheet form. So it's the same as the material setup form. So we're just going to input all of the appropriate um, X, Y, Z dimensions according to the material that I'm actually using. So in this case, for our black acrylic, we have a width of 18. Uh, we have a height of eight 
and we have a material thickness of a quarter of an inch okay i'm going to set the z0 position on the top of the material for this black acrylic sheet along the xy datum position in the lower left hand corner and we can simply go ahead and press ok so you can see the name of the sheet is listed here in the 2D view, so that's visible for us, which is very useful. And if I just scroll my mouse towards me, you'll see that we have access and visibility to our original sign layout sheet. To switch between sheets, we can do that via the 2D view by double clicking on the sheet and you'll see that it will just uh, make that the active sheet and we can double click back into the acrylic to make that the active sheet. The other option is by clicking, double clicking on the actual sheet name within our sheets list. Okay, so again, double click there and that will make the black acrylic the visible and the active sheet. We can switch off the visibility of our sheets by just using the light bulb here and that will just switch off uh, any other sheets that we have in our job but if you want to make them visible again you can just click on that light bulb to make that sheet visible okay so we've got our black acrylic so if we go back to our sign layout i would like the two hour home along with the arrows to be cut out in that black acrylic so if we just zoom in over here, I'm just going to take the two hour home text, shift and select this arrow, shift and select that arrow there. And then we're just going to right click and we're going to say copy to sheet black acrylic. Okay, so it's going to copy those vectors to the sheet. If you wanted to just move them, so move them off the sign layout sheet and then move them to a different sheet, you'd use this option here. In this case, as I mentioned before, I'd like to copy all of our parts over to the different sheets so that we have access to our finished final design always to hand within our sign layout sheet. So we're just going to copy this to the, the black acrylic sheet and you can see it's added that there like so. And then we can double click on the sheet where we can start to arrange the layout for machining. So when we copy or move vectors from one sheet to another, the software positions them relative to the lower left hand corner that they were positioned in from the previous sheet, regardless of the datum position. And so that's why it's positioned uh, the text and the arrows in this position here and so you'll see or you'll notice that we now have this boundary that extends past our sheet and this just helps us to highlight the fact that we have items over spill in the sheet and in this case what we want to do is we want to put all of the vectors onto this sheet so to do that what we could do is we could just take the to our home we could just move that over here and then we could take this arrow and move that over here. And obviously you'd probably want to look at um, arranging these into the most practical and most efficient use of your space. Okay, so something like that looks okay there. Right then, so let's go back to our sign layout sheet by double clicking on that. So now we're going to take the welcome text and we're going to move that, copy that to a new sheet. So with that selected, what we're going to do is we're going to go and add in a new sheet to begin with. Okay, and we can see that new sheet's just been created here. So we just need to give it a name and some dimensions. So for this one, we're going to say acrylic and actually we want that to be white acrylic okay so white acrylic there okay so you can see it's got the dimensions from our sign layout so what we want to do is we want to just alter the dimensions to match our white acrylic sheet that we've got so to do that what we can do is we can take that and go into the edit option here Okay, so here we can put in our width and height information. So we'll go with 18 by 8 in there. And then we'll make that one quarter of an inch, like so. Set the XY position to the center there. 
and then we could go ahead and press OK. OK, so we've got three sheets now. So let's just go back to our sign layout. We can see that our text is still selected. We can right click and say copy to sheet, in which case we're going to go with white acrylic. OK, so we've put that to the white acrylic sheet. And then if we come over here, we can see uh, that it's popped a copy of that welcome text into this white acrylic sheet. OK, so again, um, it was positioned the welcome text as per the distance from the lower left hand corner. Uh, so along the X axis and the Y axis is what we've got over here. And so we could just look at a range in this. So if we double click on that, you'll see how it's done that there. So like I said earlier, regardless of the date and position, we've got this one set to the center, it's still going to uh, copy or move those vectors from one sheet to another based on the actual distance relative from the lower left hand corner of the actual sheet itself. So we're just going to take that and we're just going to press F9 to center that into our job. And then again, to make use of our space for our sheet, we don't want to waste all the material below. So we can just use the down arrow key just to nudge that down. So now let's have a look at adding our MDF sheet. So we're going to use add new. We're going to call this one MDF. And then we'll just click to accept that. And we're just going to highlight that. We're going to use the edit option here where we can then edit uh, the dimensions here. So for MDF, we've got a piece that is 30 inches by 10 inches by 3 eighths of an inch. OK, so 0.375. And then we're going to set that to the lower left hand corner. We'll go ahead and press OK. So if we go to our sign layout, um, we're just going to take the outer border, shift and select the inner border, right click, copy to sheet, copy that to the MDF. We can see that's been imported there. I'm happy with the position of that there. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to look at the cherry sheet. So to do that, we're going to add in a new sheet. We're going to call this one cherry. And then we can simply give that uh, the different dimensions as well. So we'll go in and we'll select the cherry. We'll go and edit that, in which case we're going to go with a width of 24, a height of 10. And in this case, the material thickness is half an inch. So it's exactly the same as our sign layout. So we're just going to go ahead and OK that. OK, then, so we have pretty much all of our sheets. So we've just got to do the final copying over to the cherry sheet. So I'll double click on the sign layout here. And in this case, what I would like to send over is the welcome to our home text. So I'll select that on the arrows like so. And we also want the vector texture as well. And then we can right click and use the option there to copy to the cherry sheet. In which case you can see it's done that there for us. So by using the edit sheet options, we're making edits based on that sheet alone, as we've just demonstrated. We were able to alter the size, the Z0 position and the XY0 position for that particular sheet. Now, if you went into the job setup form from within the drawing tab, you can make the same changes for the width, height and thickness, the Z0 position and the X, X, Y, zero position for this particular sheet too. But it's very important to note here that if you decided to alter the job type, for example, if we switch that to a double sided job, it would apply that to all of the sheets. And the same goes for the units as well. So just be mindful that the job type and the units are going to apply those settings for all of your sheets. So let's just go back to our sheets tab. Now there is one more thing that we can do and we want to explore that and that is the ability to alter the settings for multiple sheets. So for example, if we take the black acrylic and the white acrylic and I've actually measured that and it's actually coming up at 0.26, we can look at altering the thickness for both of those in one go. So we could take the black acrylic hold down control and click on the white acrylic. Now if we go to edit, 
you'll see that the edit sheet option has come up whereby we can alter the thickness there. We'll make that 2.6. The date and position, you'll see that all of these radio buttons are currently selected. And that's because we've got two sheets that are using two different date and positions. One is using the lower left and one is using the center. And that's why we're displayed all of this here. But if we just set that all so it's in the lower left, we can simply click on that okay that and it will apply that to both of our sheets so that when we go in now we can see 0 0.26 0 0.26 for the z there and if we just go into the edit option lower left and if we cancel out and check the white acrylic we can see that's also set to the lower left as well so now we can move on to our toolpath so if we just scroll out so we can see all of our sheets the idea is that for the cherry we're going to create the vector texture using a profile toolpath and a ball nose tool just to really give us a nice textured effect. And then for all of the other vectors, the welcome to our home text along with the arrows, we're going to look at using the inlay toolpath. And then that's going to create the pocket or the female part for our sign. And then for the black acrylic, we'll be doing the male inlay and that will slot into the pocket recess that we create for the cherry. We'll do the same for the white acrylic as well, for the welcome sign. We'll do that using the male inlay, and then that will slot into the pocket recess from the female inlay on our cherry sheet. And then with the MDF, we're just going to use a basic profile toolpath to cut the two parts out, so it can just sit over the top of the cherry, I would just glue that together. Okay, so let's switch over to our toolpaths tab. So we're going to switch over, we've currently got our focus on the cherry sheet, so that's our active sheet here. So we'll start with that one, we'll switch over to our toolpaths. And the first and most important thing that we need to do is check over our material setup. So we can see the active sheet is cherry. So we're setting our part up here for the cherry sheet. Uh, just to check over, we've got a thickness of half an inch, XY in the lower left hand corner, Z zero position off the material surface. And you want to check over your rapid Z gaps above the material, your clearance and plunge settings, home and start position, ensuring everything is safe and appropriate for your particular machine and setup. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK there. So the first toolpath that we're going to do is we're going to look at creating the vector texture. So we're going to select this texture here and we're going to go into the profile toolpath. Okay, so here we're just going to cut down a very small 0.1 in this case. And the tool we're going to use is going to be a quarter inch ball nose. We can select that. Or we're going to machine on those vectors. So it's going to, uh, the center of the tool will be on the vectors in this case. Okay, and then we can give that a name. So we could simply call this one profile texture and then press calculate and the software will calculate that for us. It will open up the toolpath preview form and the 3D view so we can see what that looks like. So first off, as we are in the toolpath preview, we may as well look at this according to the material that we're using. So at the moment we can see it's kind of a gray color, which is, doesn't really represent cherry. So we'll click on the edit material settings option here, whereby we're going to go through our list and we're going to select the cherry option. You'll see it's much better representation of our material there. And then we could simply go ahead and just preview that. Okay, so that's what that part looks like. I love the uh, texture we've got there. I think it looks great. So we'll just put that in Z and then we'll close out of the preview toolpath form. And then we'll just go back into the 2D view. And we're just going to carefully select the text. So we'll just take that, I'm going to take the arrow, this arrow over here, and then the welcome text as well and we're going to use all of these vectors with the inlay tool okay so we're going to take that and we're going to go into the inlay tool path we're going to create the female inlay of the pocket so we're going to use the pocket option here okay so we're going to specify a cut depth here 
of 0.2 of an inch. The tool that we're going to use is going to be an eighth inch end mill. Okay, and then we can move on down and we want to include a little bit of an allowance in here. So we'll just put in an allowance of 0 0.02. So we're just overcutting it slightly just so we have a little bit of discrepancy when we insert the male counterparts into this female pocket. And obviously you're going to want to alter this value according to your own testing as it all depends on the materials you're using, the tools that you're using, along with how you're actually going to fix or finish the parts in place. Okay, so we're just going to go with this uh, 0.02. Uh, we'll give that a name, we'll call that pocket inlay. And if you wanted to learn more about the inlay toolpath in general, then I recommend that you watch the inlay toolpath guide tutorial, which we'll link you to in the related videos section for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and press calculate. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and we'll just preview that like so. Okay, so there's nothing much to see here. We can see how far down it's cut. We've got our female pocket. That's ready now for us to create the male counterparts so we can slot those parts into these recesses. Okay, right then, so we'll just go ahead and create our cutout pass. So if we just put that in Z and we'll just close out of the preview tool pass form. Then we're going to go over into the 2D view and I don't actually have a vector here that represents the part that we need to cut out, which is not a problem because we can just simply come over, find the sign layout sheet there. So there is our sheet, if we double click on that to make that the active sheet, we can take that, right click, say copy to sheet, copy that over to the cherry sheet. And then if we just double click on the cherry sheet, we can see it's been added there. And then we can simply take that vector there into the profile toolpath. This time we're going to cut all the way through our material, so 0 0.5 in there. And the tool that we're going to use is a quarter inch end mill. We'll select that. We're going to machine on the outside of those vectors and we'll just add in a few tabs just to ensure that we have our parts securely held in place. And then we can use the edit tabs option here and we can specify constant number. We'll go with four, add tabs, happy with that, close out. And then we'll just call this one profile cutout, press calculate, and then we can simply preview that toolpath and then just preview all of our toolpaths there. Perfect. Okay, so I'm happy with what we've got there. So now we can start to think about machining all of the other parts. So let's just put that in Z and then we'll just close out. So now let's just go over to our sheets tab we're going to go to the black acrylic. We're just going to double click that so that we activate that sheet. Okay, and again, we must go into our material setup. So we just want to check black acrylic. Thickness is 0.26, XY lower left, C0 on the top. And I'm happy with these settings that we've got here. So you could press OK. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at selecting our vectors, in which case we're going to take these vectors and we're going to apply an inlay toolpath. And this time we're going to use the male inlay. So here we've got a start depth of zero, cut depth we're cutting all the way through. So we'll make that 0.26. And then we're going to look at using a tool. So the tool must be exactly the same as the tool that we used for the female counterpart, which is an eighth inch end mill. So I'm happy that that's currently selected there. If you chose a different one, this inlay is not going to work. So you must make sure that you are using the same tool for both the male and the female parts. Okay, so we've got we're cutting all the way through, we've got an eighth inch end mill, and then we can simply go ahead and calculate that. And then again, we're using black acrylic, so let's just match that up. So let's go into the black colour there, and then if we preview that toolpath, just delete the waste material and just click in on those islands, we get a good idea of how that's going to look. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That will fit nicely into the cherry counterpart. 
Okay, so let's close out here. And then we'll just go into our 2D view. And then this time we want to go and activate the white acrylic sheet. So we'll double click on the white acrylic. Again, you must remember to check over the material setup on a per sheet basis. So we can see the current sheet is the white acrylic. Material thickness is 0.26. We're setting the X, Y in the lower left, C0 on the top, and everything else here is OK. So we'll OK that. And then we'll take the welcome text into the inlay toolpath. We're going for a straight male inlay. And we're just going to go the exact same settings as before. And then we'll just press calculate. And again, as we're using white here, let's change that to uh, represent that material that we're cutting into. And then we can simply preview that toolpath, delete out the waste material. And then this is what we'd be left with. And then that would slot nicely into the welcome recess of our cherry sheet. So let's just close out here. And then again, let's go into the 2D view and just scroll out so we can see our sheets. I'm just going to double click on the MDF sheet. Into set, we can see the active sheet is MDF. Material thickness is 3 eighths of an inch. XY lower left, a Z0 material surface. Everything here is OK for my setup. So we'll go ahead and press OK. So we're just going to take both of those vectors there and go straight into the profile toolpath. We're going to machine all the way through our material. So let's put in the Z followed by the equals key and the software will automatically input the thickness of our material within this field. Okay, then we're going to go with a quarter inch end mill. We're going to machine this on the outside and then we could look at adding tabs if you wanted to. If I had a good hold down system and you could just ignore that and we can just go ahead and press calculate. So we'll just alter the name of the, that to profile and then we'll press calculate here. And again, as we are using a different material, let's have a look at altering the colour of this to better replicate what it is we're using. Now, we are using MDF, but we will look at um, painting it up as a final finish. So we'll just look at using this kind of real light grey in this case. And then what we could do is we could simply go ahead there and preview that toolpath. We could delete away our waste material and there is our frame. Now you'll notice that in the toolpaths tab we have the ability to view our toolpaths on a per sheet basis. So we're currently looking at the MDF sheet and if we click on that that will provide us with a cascading menu here. We can switch to different sheets where the toolpaths will uh, update. You'll also notice that the material appearance also updates as well according to what we set. We go to Cherry, you'll see that there. But you'll also see that we have the option to view all sheets. And so if we click on that, that will show us all of the toolpaths available for all sheets. However, it will only make visible or available the toolpaths on the sheet we're currently looking at. And so if we just tile the windows there, and let's say we switch to the black acrylic, you'll see now that those three toolpaths have been greyed out and we have access to the male inlay toolpath, which belongs on the black acrylic sheet. And if we double click on the white acrylic sheet, it now greys out the male inlay for the black sheet, but we're now able to access the male inlay uh, for this white sheet that we've got currently active. And so at this stage, we'd go on to save all of the toolpaths here on a per sheet basis to cut out our multi-material welcome sign. So that completes this tutorial on how to set up a project that makes use of multiple materials. So let's go ahead and save this out. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and in the multi-sheet guide tutorial folder, we're going to call this one multi-material welcome sign. Save that and you can access that from the project folder.